We are so close to wrapping up the section and tuck bumper on Lori Prix. Stick around to see how we got here. And back at it again today here in the garage. It's time to finally get the uh, section and tuck bumper for Lori Prix on my 1979 Pontiac Grand Prix. Hey, if you're meeting for me for the first time, I'm Grant Tommy. This is Straight Six Fan. You're home for offbeat hot rodding and what's different about today's episode two. Excited, this is the first episode I'm shooting on my brand new Canon G7X Mark III camera. But keep in mind, haven't played around with settings at all. It does feel like things are a little washed out right now. Maybe a little bright, but uh, so we'll tweak with that, we'll work with that. But uh, let me bring up speed on where we're at on the bumper. So it is turn of January into February. And we strung together some pretty good weather days where it was oh over 50 degrees where I could leave the vehicles out of the garage and take up my bay to do a, put up my little paint booth and everything. And I finally got a really nice coat on the bumper. But then when I was clear coating it, I had some runs in the clear coat and we just really messed up some areas. So I taped off these three sections and made some windows. We sanded them down, we repainted them. So I'm, I'm curious to see when we, we're gonna pull this all off and we're gonna see how well it <laughs> blends or, or didn't. All right, there's definitely some uh, ghosting going on. But I think we can blend that with some uh, whole wet sand it. That's the, the thought process there. I did get s now one of the things I struggled this whole time I have this bumper seam blasted, um, but it didn't really remove a ton of the chrome uh, finish that was on it. So I've always been fighting that and what adheres and what doesn't and what prime and what in it. So it looks like we peeled some paint off and it looks like, you know, there's chrome right behind it. Good news is our bumper strip is going to cover that up, but I'll probably still touch it up with some paint here. All right, well, here's the unfortunate part was, despite my best efforts, and I did blend. I did do a good job blending, getting rid of that line with the, the uh, wet sanding, but uh, I just had thin paint, and that was my problem before. You know, when the clear coat got too heavy, it made the thin paint bubble up. So then I tried to touch it up, and as you can see, we still uncovered <laughs> those same issues. Uh, so I'm so sick of painting and sanding and painting and sanding and painting some more, same thing over here, but I do think my only best bet now is to just go ahead and mask it all off, like maybe from this edge and repaint the whole bottom portion because, I mean, that's what sucks, is because otherwise I'm really happy with the way it turned out. I mean, this top portion is so nice and well done. Um, but yeah, it's just part of me thought, do I go for the distressed look and like just, I don't know, rub some like black paint? I mean, it's stupid smooth right now <laughs> from all my sanding. Um, but you know, I don't have the right tool for that either. I don't have like an airbrush. I don't have, I mean, the other option is I could go back to where I thought I was gonna go and now take it to a vinyl shop <laughs> to have it wrapped. But I just wanna, I just want this thing to be done. I just wanna be installing it today. And that does not look like that's gonna be the case now. <laughs>
All right, well, that turned out to be, that turned out to be an okay endeavor. Um, there's still some funk down here, but compared to where it was, <laughs> I'm done messing with it, and that looks good. This side turned out, I mean, actually really good. Um, I mean, you can still kind of see there's something going on in there. I don't know if that was one of the bumperette fill spots, but uh, yeah, I mean, really, I feel pretty good about about the results. Um, and you know what I mean? Like this is this has always been about let's make this car look better than it was when I got it. And I'm certainly still in that category. And at the end of the day, right, we were using like farm and home store propane tank paint and propane tank paint. So um, all things considered for as cheap as this paint was, uh, I feel like this is a pretty good looking bumper and sure beats all of the uh, pinhole rust issue we had uh, there were definitely some definitely some thin spots on the bumper so we're gonna let this dry um, I bought some it's over there on my floor jack uh, pipe insulation that I'm going to uh, wrap wrap my stand in so I can flip this thing over and we can start installing the inner bumper structure all right, while we wait for my bumper to dry, I ended up, well, first off, this is one of like the most valuable tools uh, I have in the shop. So this little thread chaser I bought on Amazon, I'll try to leave a link in the description below um, to this guy, because it's super handy. Chase the threads on all of the, uh, the fasteners or the bumper and we went ahead and we doused them in penetrating oil here too. So we'll let those sit and soak overnight. Um, and then I'll also, I'm going to tape these guys to the inner bumper structure because they love to just fall out. And um, in fact, I should probably spray those with penetrating oil too, because you can kind of see they are threaded as well. Um, but man, that little bracket loves to come in and out, uh, especially, so let's we'll take the nuts off as we, when, when this is all together and we're sliding it on the car on the, uh, basically the bumper shock absorbers that we, we flattened. Um, but yeah, we'll tape down that bracket. crazy to think that uh, one month ago we we're talking about how bitterly cold it was outside and it's only February first week of February and it's like 60s and 50s and 60s out today um, so I'm standing out here in shorts that's insane um, but something else I did yesterday on Sunday uh, is I soaked all these fasteners in penetrating oil I chased the threads uh, soaked them in penetrating oil now these guys, these little rosettes, probably hard to see, that go on the face of the bumper, uh, they appear to have blue Loctite on them, so we should probably be doing that before we sink everything up, uh, which makes some sense, right? There's a lot of vibration going on in the bumper, but um, yeah, just for ease of install, we put penetrating oil, soak them all in penetrating oil. And, uh, anyway, we'll get these, get these all hand threaded on. And we gotta be strategic about which ones we tighten down first and when, uh, because, you know, when we section this bumper, the structure takes on just a slightly different shape, so we gotta be a little strategic about which ones we thread in first and when and where.
Okay, we're back. It's a Friday night, actually. I'm out here, and yes, fresh haircut. Um, but we got the uh, we got the inner bumper structure all uh, locked tight in and everything. Uh, so now it's on to figuring out how I want to do my uh, side marker screens, <clears throat> little extensions I built in the perforated metal. Um, I I've struggled with what I want to do here for quite some time. Thought about TIG welding it. I just felt like I was going to burn through the perforated metal. Um, problem is, can't really get a good angle with a screw gun um, to like screw in. I thought about using self-tapping screws. So I think I'm going to do JB weld, but I would love to at least get, I don't know, man, if I could just get self-tapping screw like in the bottom, because you know, if the JB weld fails and these things start flapping around, I'd love to make sure that uh, something's holding it in uh, as I go down the road. But um, yeah, we're just continuing to try to think through ideas. JB Weld says it wants to cure for four to six hours. So, um, and the, also the good news is the reason why I don't feel that bad about doing the JB Weld. These were a pretty good friction fit uh, as it was. Uh, this side, uh, we got a couple more clamp action, but so we'll let let those set up. So in the meantime, we're gonna jump over to our rubber protective strips and two things: these clips. Uh, it came off in the process, so we're going to put them back on where they're most appropriate. This is the top one. We also need to clean the back side of this because I've got that 3M double sticky tape. All right, really looking at it mocked up, I think, I think honestly the clips are going to do the majority of the work. So I don't know if I really need to worry about cleaning the whole back side of it, but obviously when we turn the corner, this is going to be hard for this to stay in place, so we, we definitely want this to be clean, so we're going to do that. And that's where we're going to do double sided sticky tape. And, I mean, lining it up with the center, it looks pretty balanced and we're, we're hitting everything. I mean, I think it's going to flatten out nice. Or as Deb would say on Napoleon Dynamite, I think it's going to turn out real nice. All right, what I learned after the fact is like through here, since I didn't have one of those slots line up perfectly, uh, we need some double sticky tape in here. So we will, we will slap some on in this section before we do this side. But uh, yeah, no, it's gonna, you can see I kind of did it after the fact. I need to trim that up. Um, but yeah, we'll get this, we'll keep going. We'll keep plugging away. It's actually kind of fun. It's uh, tedious, but it's, it's 
fun and I think it's gonna, I think it's actually gonna, I know this is kind of dorky and kind of stockish, but I actually think it's gonna look, look pretty cool when it's all done. So here's a closer look, right? So I've got the tabs there and you can see where this one doesn't quite line up with the hole. So we gotta trim that off, like carve that off, flush it out, and then yeah, that's where the uh, that's where we wanna put our double sticky tape so we can follow the contour tighter on this side. And here we are, Super Bowl Sunday. But we got the double-sided stick tape to perform really well on the uh, returns. We got both protective strips on. We got an extra day to let the JB Weld set up and cure, so we're gonna remove all the clamps and such. We're gonna pull this whole setup back further into the garage here. We got the heater on, and it is just time to install this bumper, so I'm stoked. But uh, we got some jockeying to do with the cars outside. Um, so let's get things situated and we'll be back. So we got my scissor stand set up about the right height. Went ahead and started the brackets over there to hold it in place because it wanted to roll over. Um, but first things first, what we gotta work through is our wire management. So our backup lights, we wanna snake those through first, which we have. Uh, we have lightly got my trailer light, side marker lights on. I'm gonna uh, lock tight those before we tighten them down, but then uh, just lightly Then we're stringing the rest of the wire loom through This lip of the bumper and it looks like Because uh, again, you know when you take these things apart like months ago uh, these little Got some clips that we can clip things up Up and kind of hold them in place. So that's nice um, But yeah, we got to think through a little bit on the passenger side, I believe we want to bring our reverse light through the end of the inner bumper structure. There's a little, little bit of room to snake around here, through, and then back this way. So I'm going to set you guys up on the tripod, and we'll try to get this sorted out. And then, honestly, from there, it's just a matter of adding shims and tightening everything down. Okay, so one of the things we've learned through all this time, doing mock-ups and whatnot, is my wings like to droop like that when you install it. So we took the uh, these bumper shims that were always on the car, we took them and we buzzed one in half. So we will slide these in on the top of the, the bracket. So the bracket has like, mounting post we'll see if I can get in there has like four studs on it so we'll slide it in just on the top row and that should help help us tilt it in such a way that it'll be level so anyway that's our next step we just gotta we're just gotta hang this bumper and then and then we can throw in our, our reverse lights um, too but I gotta say you know the cheap propane tank aluminum 
actually it looks pretty sharp I feel like I feel like it turned out really well and uh, I, I don't know I'm really pleased with the pleased with the results especially from especially from this distance <laughs> this is uh, the first time I'm shooting with this camera and while the um, time-lapse function was very similar to my old Canon camera uh, apparently I failed at that so I thought I had a time-lapse of me putting this thing on but let's get a real up close look and figure out just exactly where we got. After we finally got the bumper hung, the last thing left then was our reverse lights. I went to the auto parts store, bought some new bulbs, and while I and then we even cleaned our uh, our lenses. But what I found out was apparently in removal, I delaminated the cover from the surround. Um, I figured our fasteners would be enough to keep the lens on, but uh, the holes are bigger for the lens, so we got to figure out how to probably epoxy these things back together um, but you know what at some point I gotta start editing this video we got a lot of work to capture so I think we'll save this for another day and hopefully you've enjoyed this gosh it looks so much better I mean from like the straight on like every day I open the garage door and roll up in the driveway and I see this like much more form fitted feature uh, man, I just I just love it. It looks it makes the car look so much more sporty from the back Especially when you see the width of the 245 tires on our Corvette wheels, but hey, like I said We got in this somewhere. That's gonna do it for this episode to all my six fans out there Thanks for watching <laughs>